the friend Tony. He got a little bit excited on Twitter again last night. <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a recurring. It's a recurring thing with old Tony. God bless him. <laughs> what do you do? So, so uh, it was must have been on Dynamite last week or Collision. So, uh, Tony can announce the match. It's going to be a world title match, I think, between Samoa Joe and Hook, Taz's kid. And um, Hook, he's, I can't say he's been featured on Dynamite. He's been more on like Rampage and Collision, but made the match, but I don't know if some online fans was like, why is he getting a match, blah, blah, blah. You know, that's just fans in general. So, this past Monday, um, it was announced that Seth Rollins will be defending his world title against Jinder Mahal next week. Uh, Jinder's been on t- off TV for a while, but they just gave him the, you know, uh, title shot. It's a placeover feud for the time being. Anyway, so Tony Khan got upset about that. It's a double standard Hook is 28 and 1 career record on a winning streak, calls out the champ. Logical uh, challenge sparks online outrage. Jinder has literally lost every match he's been in for the past year and immediately gets a title shot. Where is the rage? Dynamite tomorrow on TBS. So Tony Khan's upset because people criticize his book in, saying, Why you're upset with me and why you're not upset with Seth Rollins v. Jinder Mahal. Maybe you to should wait. stop concentrating on what the fucking competition is doing and concentrate on your own fucking program there, Tony. Yeah. So to which uh, a fan uh, quote traded and said, these guys do have history. Speaking of Jinder and Seth Rollins, Seth Rollins defeated Jinder Mahal in the tournament finals to become the first NXT champion. That is true. USA Network quoted it saying, what was the cage match rating? So that's a jab at Tony because Tony loves to talk about you know the, the ratings from Cage Match for his matches. Doesn't like talking about ratings, but actual match ratings he loves talking about it. Tony Khan responded, "A moral victory for USA is one more than their world title challenger Jinder Mahal has in the past 364 days, because it's literally been a few, full year since he won a match." You really put AW in our place getting Jinder Mahal in a big match on your TV show. Do it more often. Now, before we move on, you know AW is having contract talks with Time Werner, Warner Brothers. Yeah. Hopefully it works out for him. I've said this before. I want AW to succeed. But if, for example, negotiations break down, they're looking for another network, and you would imagine someone like USA would be someone where AEW would like to talk to in the future. So automatically, people at USA must be thinking, who the fuck is this clown? Hold on a second. Uh, Samoa Joe, that's the world heavyweight title, right? AEW's world. Okay. Is Hook a heavyweight? Does he even weigh 200 pounds? No. Okay. He's, We're going by like kid, statistics, wins and losses, and like believability. Yeah. Well, why is a 170 pound kid fucking working for the world's heavyweight title if you want like legitimate sportsmanship? Yeah. Work? Anyway, <laughs> you watch his own show, or does he concentrate more on what WWE is doing? I put it this way. Someone made a good point. Now it's not some. He's not. We're not the biggest fans of him. Bully Ray. Now we know your opinion of him and mine. I've never met the guy, but I trust you and I trust Paul, and I've heard your first kind reports uh, on him. Bully Ray said it best. He said Tony Khan's not a booker. He's a matchmaker. He puts matches together, but he can't book a show. Now, I think he's spot on when he, with that assessment. He's a fan. Yeah. It's you know he's a fan who has a rich father. I mean, if he's living his dream, great, but you're affecting. Listen, I wouldn't have a podcast or a YouTube show if I wasn't passionate about wrestling. You know, hmm. this business took my father from being an orphan into a multimillionaire. You know, yes. it's been my source of income since I was 18. You know, this is my whole life, right? So when I see it being portrayed like shit it, it it's hurtful to me you know hmm. 
I mean, I watched a clip from what was the last pay per view? World's End, AEW. World's End, yes, yeah. Okay. Now, God bless these two girls, but Chris Stratlander and Willow Nightingale, and this was like the last fifteen seconds, was the worst shit I've seen in a long, long time. I mean, it was amateur hour wrestling. I mean, I've seen students in wrestling school have better chemistry than these two. Yeah. Like it was, it was god awful. I mean, and this is how much do they charge for their pay per views? Sixty dollars, sixty US. I think so. Yeah. Okay, so that's like nearly eighty Canadian. People are paying their heart, and I know Tony. You know, he's a, was born a billionaire. He doesn't realize, you know, that's chump change to him right that's pocket money but for a lot of people they have to work hard for 80 dollars or 60 dollars oh yeah you know and to put money on pocket, that's what you're that's what you're oh anyway anyway so <laughs> the carry on from this uh, is the right one jonathan coachman <laughs> intervened we also used to get amused at fans who counted wins like wrestlers earned them Hell, if Vince wanted, I could have been world champion. Well, the storyline didn't support it. It's about the story, clearly not wins in a predetermined space. Thought a boss would understand that. So the, a fan commented on the coach. Tony forgets that he literally gave Abaddon a title shot after being off AWTV for a year. The exact same situation as Jinder. To which Eric Bischoff started the chime in. <laughs> hey, Tony Khan, is this true or is it a bot? <laughs> so whenever someone speaks negatively of uh, AEW, uh, Tony Khan presumes they're bots. <laughs> so Tony Khan responded to this. Oh. No, Eric Bischoff, not true at all. Abaddon returned to AEW, plus Fenn had a, won a four-way match on TNT against other great wrestlers to earn a title shot, which is completely different than someone going on a full year, losing uh, every match they're in, getting a title shot without a single win. He genuinely speaks, well, tweets, like diehard fans I've seen online, who, like, makes every excuse and, like, goes into every little detail. He really does. Because he's a fan. That's at the end of yes. the day, that's all he is. Hey man, so, um, if guy, I hope, I hope he hangs around for the next twenty years, and he keeps large contracts, and the boys can make a living, and the guys are done with WWE or WWE's done with them. He can hire those guys, and they can keep making lots of money for little to no work. And yeah, I hope it works out. So there's three more tweets here. We'll uh, get through them. <laughs> Eric Bischoff simply replied with a clown emoji. And uh, Tony Khan responded, get on my site, you miserable ha husband. Wow. Uh, Eric Bischoff replied to that. You've got a thing for that hairstyle, don't you, Tony? <laughs> you know, Tony Khan's my age. You know that, right? I know. <laughs> Um, while all this is happening, Jinder Mahal, who hadn't tweeted for about a year, simply said, Who the fuck is Hook? Watch <laughs> Monday Night Raw on USA Network, Monday, 8 p.m. EST. <laughs> and I think Hook also responded, saying, Who the fuck is Jinder Mahal? So obviously, they're having fun with each other. Well, uh, no, if you understood the sensitivity of pro wrestlers, yeah. They... oh, yeah. Well, yeah, because actually, I, I, I tell you, after Mahal tweeted that, uh, Taz actually quote tweeted it and said and tagged his boy Hook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. They'll, listen, man, pro wrestler is some of the most sensitive people you ever meet in your life. Insecure. Mm. The bigger the ego, the more sensitive they are, dude. It's fucked. <clears throat> Um, I understand. I understand completely. Why do you think I don't have a Twitter or an Instagram? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, That's just a waste of fucking time to me. So the the thing 
Well, with this though, <laughs> what's funny? Jinder Mahal's over like Rover right now. He's been trending because of this situation. No. Now, obviously, wrestlers can have a go at each other. They're wrestlers. They're the boys. Right. That's something I'll never understand because I'm not a wrestler. But when it's the boss of a company attacking a wrestler on a completely different, from a different, a completely different company, Jinder Mahal, from all accounts I've heard, is a, is a nice guy and he gets along with everyone. He works hard. He's put he's put in the work. I I wasn't a fan of him as WWE champion. I've made that clear. I think had he been presented better, then he could have been believable. He's got a great look. He's good on the mic and he's a decent worker. But when you're attacking a wrestler, you know yourself like Jinder's friends with a lot of them people in that locker room. It, more than likely, with the amount of ex WWE stars who's jumped over to AEW, he's probably got a few friends over in AEW. And they're thinking, why is he attacking Jinder when Jinder's done nothing in this situation? But you just said it, Jinder's trending. Yeah. Okay, so, so how, does that help, how does that help Tony at all? He's making you know, the competition's guy trend, yeah. not his guys. So you did well, fuck that, that, Well, that's it. Like, Raw would probably have got its normal rate, average rate in any way, but... <laughs> WWE fans would be like, fuck Tony, we're all going to tune in for Jinder this, this coming yeah. Monday. Turning They'll probably himself. get some decent fucking ratings. Yeah, he's just turning himself heel by doing it. Making yeah. him, making all the fans realize what a, what a fucking mark he is, right? Yeah. Okay, well, enough of this. That's, that's, uh...